Hi, it's Joe. Welcome to the Quilt Report. Uh, well, today I'm in my studio. I'm just working along. I'm working on a quilt uh, that I started about uh, well, about a month ago, and I'm just getting around to quilting it now. It's been uh, quite a time. I'm putting a locomotive on it. Um, you can see I'm at the part where it's a lot of the mechanical uh, bits that stick out, a lot of bolts and pipes and stuff. In the next couple passes, I'll be putting the big gigantic wheels and arms that drive those wheels uh, in the quilting. Um, but that's where I'm at right now. Uh, you know, people are surprised lots of times at what my quilts look like. Uh, somebody said the other day, in fact, uh, oh, so it's not your grandmother's quilt, huh? Well, you know what? It actually is my grandmother's quilt. My, uh, the idea that people use that phrase is something that I would like to just wipe out. I'd like to get rid of that. For this reason, when you say it's not your grandmother's quilt, the implication, of course, is that uh, your grandmother's quilt is boring or uh, uh, useless or uninteresting. Well, um, it's also an insult to my grandmother. I mean, uh, to, to all of our grandmothers, our brilliant grandmothers who came up with this idea of the American quilt and uh, built into the idea is that it can look like anything. Here's one, here's a nice one from the 1930s, huh? Look at that, who made it? We don't know, somebody's grandmother. And uh, when we say uh, not your grandmother's quilt, well, what we're uh, implying is uh, it, it's all too common. It's just a standard insult against old ladies, little old ladies who uh, in this culture are the most unvalued people of all, right? A little old lady, how could she do anything interesting or valuable or worth studying or worth looking at? Well, here's how she did it. Here's how she does something that's worth studying, that's valuable, that's worth looking at. She invented the American quilt. Oh my God, what an invention. An invention that's a, actually a universe where you can uh, go through the door and it's like a rocket ship into this beautiful world where you can do anything you can think of. You can make it look like anything you can conceive of. Now, that is a beautiful thing. And who invented it? Your grandmother. That's who. And if you look at, have you looked at 19th century quilts? Not your grandmother's quilt? Well, take a look and just imagine what's there. Uh, not your grandmother's quilt? Oh, do you mean that it's better than my grandmother's quilt? It's not better. It's, I mean, someday I would like to make something that's half as good as the masterpieces of the 19th century, right? I'm, I'm trying to just, just, I'm running as hard as I can to try to catch the coattails of some of the great quilt makers of the past, that's all. So well, if you say not your grandmother's quilt, to me, uh, expect uh, me to come at you with this idea. Please, stop saying that. It denigrates old ladies, which is all too common in our society. And it denigrates old quilts, which is even more common in our society. Uh, and when actually our quilts represent one of the most awesome cultural edifices in our whole culture. It's unappreciated, of course it is. But that doesn't mean that uh, all of us have to say things that, com that, that, uh, co that continue to denigrate them, all right? So uh, let's think of another way to talk about somebody's work other than saying it's not your grandmother's quilt. Let's think of some other words instead of using that tired, old, worn out cliche that's an insult to your grandmother and to her quilts. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time.